Hello everyone, welcome to Just Invest Today, guys. And today, I want to talk about this new S&P strategy that has been coming into my mind like crazy and I just had to get this video out there. Tell me what you guys think about this new strategy that I have in my mind. Because I've been watching a lot of interviews. So there was one interview with Guy Spare saying that he's, since it's like investment, like history, he's only beating the market by like, what, 2%? So maybe around like 10, 11 percent. Like that's not good enough for us guys. It's like we want to do way better than that. And then on top of that, I was reading more articles and they're talking about how people like Warren Buffett, like even Monish Pabrai, like it's been years, it was like five, six years when he's been underperforming the market. But that's part of the game, guys. Like the long term matters. So even if Monish Pabrai was underperforming the market like for like five to six years, in the maybe what, the eighth, tenth year he's outperforming the market overall so that really got me thinking right why don't investors because we guys we know that the top stocks that actually move the s p in the market are the main big techie kind of stocks that do good so let me get into this so the top 10 s p 500 stocks by index weight so the Standard & Poor 500 Index, or simply the five, S&P 500, is a market capitalization weighted index of 505 large cap U.S. stocks. The index accounts for 80% of the market value of the U.S. equities market. Because it reflects nearly all of the largest stocks in the U.S., it often regarded as anonymous with the market as a whole. It's the closest there is to a default U.S. stock index. Because this is weighted by market cap, the larger stocks have a big impact on both long-term performance and daily movement of the index. The 10 biggest stocks make up 26% of the index market value. So guys, these are the stocks that are making the biggest movements in the index. So when you see the index actually achieving these 20% averages, it's because of these 10 stocks. Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, uh, Google, Berkshire Hathaway, JP Morgan, Tesla, Johnson & Johnson. So what I'm trying to get to is what if we just have like 25% of our portfolio in one of these 10 stocks? Like we, we 25%. So we invest in four, we invest like four of these stocks. We invest in four of these stocks. It can either be the top 10 or the top 15. So if it was top 15, we can put uh, Visa in this, Procter & Gamble, uh, Nvidia, Home Depot, MasterCard, JP Morgan. United Health Group. So, but we want to probably stick to more of the top 10. So we find the best top 10 stocks that we can invest in and we only invest in four of them. So guys, so when that, so when the S&P does good, it's because of these four stocks. So you're never, so you have some of your portfolio in those S&P type of stocks but when they do really good, you're going to see the huge benefit because it's not weighted down but all the rest of the S&P. You see what you see what I'm trying to say? So, you'll get these you'll get way more gains so if the market goes up 20%, these are the stocks that are contributing to that. So, you would probably average around like 30-40% instead because these are the stocks that are going up like crazy and these are ones that are contributing to all the market gains while the other ones are usually trying to bring it down a little bit because they're not getting those high percentages like the Facebooks, the Apples, the Googles. So, but the thing about the strategy still, you're still going to have a lot of volatility. That's the thing. It's not going to re really reduce your volatility, but you're going to have more gains compared to the S&P, like the guaranteed gains of the S&P. And then on the other 75% of your stocks, I'm still going to use my strategy of finding these really high growth stocks that have a long runway. And, um... I still and I think they're like fairly priced, but they're wonderful businesses, fairly priced. So, what do you think about that strategy? So, we have twenty five percent in one of these ten stocks, or maybe in four, we're gonna invest in four of these stocks uh, that are contributing the most to the S and P five hundred. So we're gonna get those huge gains if when these stocks go up, and if they decline, right? We're probably gonna suffer a little bit more volatility. But on the, on the back end, we're getting all that upside when they go up. Because those are the ones contributing to the S&P. 
that's where it kind of my mindset is. I'm not sure if that's a correct, but tell me what you guys think about that, that strategy, right? And then on top of that, it maybe it got me to thinking about Lilu too, because look, Lilu has Alphabet, Facebook, Apple. Like those stocks are contributing so much to the S and P's growth, the, from a weighted percentage. Like these are the stocks moving the market. So Lilu isn't gonna do that bad compared to the market because look at the stocks that he owns. Like 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 those are the stocks contributing to the market. So if he go if he if the market goes down, those stocks are gonna be going down. But he, at least he's averaging it out. But when he goes up, those stocks are going to be booming, getting way more of that market gain because he has those top S&P stocks that are contributing to the market. So tell me what you guys think about that strategy. So basically is you have all that upside and you're, and all the other rest of the stocks that are not really contributing to the market are not going to really bring down your returns, right? And then on the but on the flip side, when the market does go down, it's going to be more volatile. I agree with that. But we, we, we're okay with that because we get more of the upside when the market is doing good. And, thus, and these are the stocks contributing to the market. And then your your rest of the your portfolio is going to be with these high-growth, long-term, wonderful companies. So it's just... And my thinking is just to balance out your portfolio just in case... You, you really can't beat the market, right? That's how, that's what I'm thinking, like, because, like, someone like Guy Spare, he's saying he only beat the market by, like, what, 2%? Like, that's nothing. And then a lot of these long-term investor guys, like, they barely beat the market for, like, they can, they can underperform the market for five to six years, and you just have to grind it out. So, so tell me what you think about that strategy, guys. Like, 25% in stocks that are, honestly, are in the S&P or the heavily weighted uh, stocks in the S&P and then 75% you're doing your own thing but you're still finding these wonderful businesses and the thing about this strategy too we don't just want to invest in it or dollar cost average we want to wait until we get a good price right and the stocks that we invest in in the S&P they're going to be the high growth ones the, the ones that we can still see like a lot of growth in like they have a long runway like we can see Amazon that company still has a long like a long runway of growth um, Facebook, that company has a long runway of growth. What else? Tesla, maybe. Um, what else is there? Johnson Johnson, maybe. Uh, what a Visa. I can still see Visa going. Google. We can get the Google that has a long runway of growth. Nvidia, Home Depot. So like stocks like that that we we know have a long runway of growth, and not just gonna be those steady kind of little ones that we're gonna just go by, right? But the thing is this, you still got to wait for a good price to get in before we do the strategy. We just don't want to invest in right now, but we're waiting for that market downturn or something happening with the company. So that was just my thoughts that came to my mind, but tell me what you think of it. Guys, if you like this video, like it, subscribe to my channel. I'll get back to you in the next video. Peace.